Why are so many people in the 21st century sick? Your medical doctor may be the nicest person in the world. Doctor, which means to teach. But your medical doctor doesn't practice health care. They practice disease management. Unfortunately, allopathic medicine merely suppresses someone's symptoms and fails completely to address root cause. There's a giant difference between health care and disease management. You don't get healthier. Your heartburn is never cured. Your blood pressure is never cured. Your anxiety and depression are never cured. Being sick is the new normal. Look around. What's interesting, too, is that patients that are taking medications don't seem to realize that they're not getting better. Since 1912, in the United States of America, we have existed inside of a medical monopoly. Which is all thanks to John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, and the Abraham Flexner Report. Inside of a monopoly, well, absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> and to this day, sick people will go down to their doctor and the answer is always drugs. I wonder why. The pharmaceutical industry took over control of the development and the delivery of medicine. When you're sick, you're scared and you're basically going to do whatever the man or the woman in the white coat tells you to, right? And by the way, the pharmaceutical industry, well, too big to fail, too big to jail. Does that sound like an optimal situation for you? It's only an optimal situation for the pharmaceutical companies. Are you happy in paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month in medical insurance premiums, which give you access to a system of medicine when you inevitably do become sick, a system of medicine which simply manages the problem? We inevitably get sick because of our modern diet and lifestyle. And the answer is just more pharmaceuticals. Why is the conversation all about waiting for the next vaccine? And oh, by the way, it's not a conspiracy, it's reality. The reason is simply money. It would perhaps be prudent for you to educate yourself about alternatives to MD-directed pharmaceutical centrist medicine because in a free market, people gravitate towards the better system. If you have high blood pressure, the first thing to consider is that you don't have enough calcium and magnesium in your body and that's the cause of the high blood pressure. It's not because you have a lisinopril deficiency. Human beings don't have drug deficiencies just like every other animal in nature doesn't have a drug deficiency. If you're suffering with type 2 diabetes, it's because you're eating all of the wrong foods all of the time. Carbohydrates are the reason why many people have type 2 diabetes. If you have an arthritic condition, it's not because you got older. It's because your bones and joints ran out of the raw materials that they needed to keep themselves healthy. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. They're not trained in it in conventional medical school. And more is the pity. Most medical doctors amount on average around 11 hours of total nutrition training over their entire program of five or six years. You have to know what is the species-specific diet for humans over the last three and a half million years. Now, we've been on this planet as a species for about 300, 350,000 years. Which means we should be eating foods that are compatible with our genetic package. The vast majority of us have been completely misled when it comes to what actually is a proper human diet. I, myself, was deluded as a doctor who did get some nutrition training in medical school. So even Dr. Berry had to educate himself because he didn't receive this information while in medical school. I had no idea at the time when I became severely obese. I became pre-diabetic. I had all these chronic medical problems and I thought that was just a product of getting old. Most of the GPs and medical doctors that I've seen myself are clearly metabolically unwell. I've been doing this wrong the entire time, not because I'm dumb, not because I'm lazy, not because I'm a glutton, but just because I was given the wrong information. Even the majority of nutritionists and dietitians are pretty clueless because they've all soaked up the misinformation and the disinformation that pertains to the corrupt food guidelines. You were just using the wrong template, even if it was endorsed by a very prominent, famous organization or association like the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, the American Medical Association, because very often they have other interests. Their main interest is not you getting healthy. Healthy patients are no longer repeat customers. There is conflicting information. So not only do you have to do the research, you have to sift through conflicting information. So there's a lot of variables against people. A quick Google search is not the answer either. So that brings us to Ansel Keys. He said that Americans eat too much fat and much of that saturated fat damages the arteries and leads to coronary artery disease. Which is a dangerous narrative given that humans thrive on animal fats and not carbohydrates. He was appointed by the US government to give advice on how we should feed our forces. After the war, Ansel Keys began to focus on what he called the new American plague being coronary heart disease. 
And then he came up with his diet heart hypothesis. That stated that dietary saturated fats increase cholesterol in the blood and in turn increases the risk of coronary artery disease. The more fat, the higher the incidence of CHD. But there's a sting in the tail. The graph on the right was the real graph. Those are all the countries that were included in that list. And what he did, he only selected out countries that he knew fell into that graph and presented the data. Pure fraud. Still like apples as much as ever? Haven't got one in your pocket, have you, doctor? An apple a day is not possible for any human that is living in the wild. What every single one of your ancestors, you watching this right now, listening to this, every single one of your ancestors before 15,000 years ago ate meat and ingested blood. That diet is what made us what we are. Red meat is the human diet, not cereal with almond water or soybeans and lentils. Based on years of studying the anthropological data, paleoanthropological data, text from explorers and researchers from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, and early 1900s, it becomes pretty obvious these basic principles. You only have to look outside to see the lack of edible plants. These so-called healthy plants we're supposed to eat every single day. This study looked at over 100,000 men and women in 18 countries, and all 18 countries were included in the follow-up. And the conclusion was there was no association between coronary heart disease and mortality or the intake of saturated fats and overall fat intake. Now, I'm not big on studies because they just don't inform on cause and effect. But this kind of associative data is the type of stuff that plant-based dieters love to cite. Patients who ate more fat, especially saturated fat, had lower incidence of strokes. The higher carbohydrate intake was associated with an increased mortality. When you don't have fat to eat, you're going to eat carbohydrates. I'm sure the vegans will have a counter study, but it's all meaningless. We have in fact eaten animal fats and proteins, not carbohydrates three to five times per day. In modern society with epidemics of type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity, these people are just eating too many carbohydrates for their personal physiology. It is all to do with carbs. We're just not able to accommodate so many carbohydrates in the diet and remain optimally healthy. In 1961, multiple studies already showed that if you eat a high carbohydrate diet, you get lipemia within one hour. Fruits are not that good for you. And stop making a puree out of it. Fruits happen to be very high in fructose and deuterium, both of which damage our mitochondria and are very taxing on our systems. Juicing it so it all goes into your body all at one time and the poor pancreas says, what happened? I had all the sugar in five seconds. I don't know what to do with this. And now you get hyperinsulinemia for the next four to five hours. Additionally, fructose goes straight to your liver where it converts it to fat and will likely end up on your belly. Now, some people can tolerate more carbohydrates than others. It's a known concept in evolutionary science. Any population of a species, there's going to be variability. And so some people can tolerate up to 100 total grams of carbohydrates a day and still be very metabolically healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy. Now, if we were to follow the American dietary guidelines, we'd find ourselves consuming between 225 and 325 grams of carbs per day. This is way too excessive. Other people need to turn down what I call the carbohydrate intake knob. For some people like me who fatten very easily and develop prediabetes very easily, I have to keep the carbohydrate intake knob turned down as low as I possibly can, which is a carnivore diet. AKA, our species appropriate diet. Most people in the population, if they eat too much veg, they're going to have bloating, they're going to have a skin issue, they're going to have joint issues, mental health uh, degradation, they're going to have something. Indigestible fiber creates gas and the plant defense chemicals that they possess will deplete nutrients and inflict damage on different areas of the body. Some doctors are saying that salt is healthy, but the American Heart Association guidelines suggest that we should be lowering salt intake, less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium intake per day for most adults. Another piece of nonsense. Salt is required for our heart to pump properly, and if you think that about 60% of our body is composed of water, none of which is without salt. The American Heart Association said we need to eat a low-salt diet. You're welcome to your own opinion. 
but not your own set of facts. Every mammal on the planet seeks out salt, and so did we. But in America, where Kellogg's and Kraft and, and Kraft Heinz and Mondelez and other billion-dollar corporations are in charge of our food supply, blood is gross. Blood is perhaps a sin to even eat blood. You want to avoid blood at all costs. You don't even get it on your hands, much less eat it. We wouldn't drain the blood of an animal like we do today. Our meat was saturated in blood, which is high in salt and electrolytes. When we caught an animal, we either drank the blood or used it to cook with. When you go to the middle of the grocery store and you buy food from the middle aisles, which is where they put the food that they make the highest profit on, they're inflammatory and they're high in carbohydrates. They're full of grains, which every human on the planet has some degree of inflammatory response to any of the grains. Yet the vast majority of modern humans base all of their meals around grains. Or they've got vegetable seed oils, which human beings have only been eating for the last 100 years. Industrial seed oils are totally manufactured and they are not a natural oil we'd have access to. And so again, back to that ancestral component, never in our history has the, the predominant fat in our diet been a vegetable seed oil or a plant butter. Humans ate lots and lots of animal fats, saturated fats, cholesterol. And there's been nothing but misdirection for the last uh, 85 years concerning cholesterol. LDL is supposed to be the bad cholesterol. It really isn't. LDL cholesterol doesn't exist. LDL is a lipoprotein that carries just cholesterol around in our blood. There's only one type of cholesterol. The majority of hormones in the human body are made from cholesterol. All of your sex hormones are made from cholesterol. Including a very important role in the pathway that leads to vitamin D3, for example, which is an important cofactor for just about every metabolic process in the body. The walls of our trillions of cells in the body are made out of cholesterol just like the myelin sheathing on our neurons are. Your central nervous system and brain, the majority of them, their structure is cholesterol. <laughs> How and why do we lower it? And can we lower cholesterol too much? How do we lower it? Well, we shouldn't. We don't need to intervene on our bodies with poisons as if our bodies are stupid. Modern medicine has placed cholesterol-lowering statins on a pedestal. The chairman of Heart UK, the appropriately named Dr Reckless, even appeared to recommend their inclusion into the water supply. And this is how you should do it. Indeed, statins are a very bad idea. Millions of people around the world taking statins will derive absolutely no benefit from them. Statin drugs did not reduce the death from heart attacks, nor from any other cause. They are a dangerous contraindicated metabolic poison. With the very real possibility of harm. So maybe the reason this drug is pushed so heavily is due to money. About a trillion dollars. The cholesterol-lowering drug Baycol has been known to cause kidney failure, muscle pain, weakness, and even death. We can't say the same for having high cholesterol. Side effects of statins are very real, can be very serious, and are usually majorly downplayed. Liver damage, muscle damage, blood in the urine, worsening control of diabetes if you have it, and increased risk of developing it if you don't, fatal liver failure, nerve damage, dementia, and muscle destruction. Again, we can't say the same for having high cholesterol. There is no relationship between high cholesterol and heart disease. And well, oh, by the way, it's not just the naturopathic doctor who's saying this. This information has been trying to leak itself into the mainstream for a long time. A trillion dollar drug, you say? I'd like to leave the final word on statins to their discoverer, Akira Endo. In 2004, he was found to have an elevated LDL level. And his doctor, not knowing who he was, recommended that he take a statin. Akira declined. And so too should all human beings, as they are toxic poisons that have absolutely no business in our system. Somehow in medicine, we have an inertia that takes years and years and years for people to start believing and turning the, the Titanic. It took 50 years to finally get people to understand that smoking causes heart disease. And finally, the government then stepped in and also started doing something about it and promoting advertisements, etc., to make people quit smoking. It took 50 years. We don't need drugs to be healthy. We require proper food. Amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals. Those are the only essential nutrients they are. There are no essential carbohydrates, fibers, or polyphenols people on a ketogenic or a carnivore diet. They make wonderful gains in weight loss. All their metabolic markers are perfect. I do hope you found this interesting. 
Please share far and wide, especially with those who are taking lots of medications or eating way too many carbohydrates. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.